So guys, now that we're done with the pat pat, the trampoline, I've got something exciting for you guys to do with your hands. <laughs> we're going to be making Play-Doh. <laughs> Let me quickly take you through what we're going to be using. We've got flour, we've got salt, we've got cream of tartar, we've got oil, and the different food coloring. <laughs> so maybe one of you is going to make pink, the other one will make red, the other one will make green, or maybe even mix the colors. Yeah. So guys, let's get rolling. Yeah. Gonna put the flower in. Yatla, bring yours closer so I can assist you there. Then the cream of tartar. Then we've got the salt. Salt. Then a bit of oil. Now you guys have to choose the colors you want, okay? Arnaya, which color do you want? I think I'm gonna make pink and green. Okay, a bit of pink green. and the green. Can I put in the red for you? Yes, please. All right, great. Now we're going to add in the hot water. Ooh. Careful there, always have an adult assisting you here. There we go. A bit of hot water on that one too. Great, now dig in with your spatulas, guys. So if your consistency is a bit too watery, just add more flour, and if it's too thick, add a bit of water again. There we go. Awesome. Once your place dough is a pasta dough consistency, then you know it is perfect. And now because it is cold, you can set aside your spatulas and use your hands. <laughs> These ones are already way ahead of us. You see they already got their hands dirty. Clearly. <laughs> now mama bear and not chef. <laughs> We're out here with the little ones. What is the importance of spending time with our little kids? It's very, very, very important. And I actually really schedule time out to spend with my kids because sometimes my schedule can get really hectic. So for me, I actually really block out literally yeah. from my calendar and say time with kids or time with family. Yeah. Because you get to know your children a bit more, you get to conversate with them and do a lot of things with them. And what activities do you personally do with them to keep them mentally stimulated? Apart from cooking, <laughs> that is. <laughs> We've got a lot of things that we do. For example, we have movie nights and for movie nights, they prepare the snacks for movie nights. Um, we've got game nights, so we have different board games that we play, mm -hmm. but we also have um, like books of um, past crosswords. So they we would then have a competition of who's going to finish I'm the crossword quicker or the fastest. So yeah, those are some of the things that we do, apart from also playing soccer yeah. outside, because we obviously have to do some physical activity. Yeah. yeah. Now you brought out the Play-Doh today. Is there a reason why you chose Play-Doh specifically? Well, I was thinking about these little ones. <laughs> Look, um, just with the mixing, you know, the mixing of the different ingredients, obviously that stimulates the mind. Also using the, their hands for touch, so that's the sense of touch, and creativity on what they're going to be creating with the Play-Doh. So he wants to do something like a Spider-Man, <laughs> she wants to do Barbie doll, you know, so it yeah. always brings out some bit of creativity in them. Is that a reason why you also use different colors? because that's also helping them with their memory for color <laughs> That's very important because that's another thing. Then you can always ask them, what color mm. is this? What color is that? What color bowl do you want, yeah. you know? So that you can see, what, do they actually remember colors? Yes. So yeah, that's quite important when it comes to stimulation. And of course, fun. And of course, <laughs> most importantly, spending, spending time, time with them. True. True. This has been an amazing experience, now, lady. just getting to spend time with our little ones, you know, and all the lessons you've taught us today, especially that Play-Doh recipe. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome, Dumi. It's been such an amazing experience having you and the little ones with me. I hope you certainly have learned quite a bit about entertaining them. Thank you once again. Thank you. Only tuning in now, where have you been? You missed our fish cakes 
and you also missed the fritters. But luckily, we've still got something in store for you. Chef, we are in the third part of our cook-along and you've got something very interesting in store for us, right? Yes, definitely. Um, we've got baked chicken goujons, well, cheesy as well. So quite excited about it. Okay, okay, okay. For the layman's terms, what is goujons? What are goujons? <laughs> what exactly goes into that? <laughs> so it's just basically strips. So you can have fish goujons, the chicken ones. So it's just basically your fillet cut into, your chicken fillet cut into strips. Okay. That's it. Okay. And what exactly goes into this dish? Okay, we've got our chicken fillet, we've got um, eggs, we've got breadcrumbs, which we're going to also put um, cheese into it. So we're going to grate the cheese. And then to go with this, we've got a dip which is mayo and sweet chili, as easy as that. You know, the one thing I've seen throughout this cook-along is that you've kept the ingredients very si simple, very simple, very easy, and also very economical. I mean, all of these ingredients I'd like to think most people have in their pantry or fridge. So it also saves you a whole lot of money, right? Look, the easiest thing to do, stress-free, Look for ingredients that are easily accessible, ingredients that are commonly used in the household. Yeah, yeah. okay, perfect. So let's get our hands dirty, guys. Um, I'm going to start grating. Okay, first, you're going to show us exactly how to cut those goujons you talked about. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take our chicken and basically just cut it into strips. Okay. There we go. The way you guys are looking at your mom, it's as if you're curious about cutting this. Have you ever made the goujons yourself before? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, has with the other kiddies cook along. <laughs> so she's sort of my assistant with the kiddies cook along classes. So that's why she's done so many of the dishes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay, chef, is there a specific technique you want to use when cutting the chicken or just? Just cut it into finger size strips so you don't need a specific. Remember, you're also doing it for kids, so nothing too fancy as well. Okay. Yep. All right, and the next step? Can I cut? Yatla, can you take us through the next step? Next step, I'm going to be cracking these eggs. Okay. What's wrong? <laughs> no, I want to cut. Do you want her to cut? Yes. You want to cut? No, it's fine. You'll be doing the dipping on that side. I can make Okay. Egg number one. Mm -hmm. Do you know if there are any tricks to checking if eggs are fresh or not? Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, you your nose. Okay, yeah, yeah, tell us. <laughs> okay, I just shake them or I crack them and then just put just peep a little bit before I put them in with the other eggs. And then what did I tell you about not breaking them into one? So that they don't mix, so that you don't mistake um, a proper egg with a one that's rotten. Yeah, okay. yeah that's what I can say. Okay, All right. All right. perfect. Okay, chef, I don't see any whisks over here. So is there a preference between fork and whisk? Uh, look, whatever you have. A fork does the job either way. <laughs> Not every household has a whisk, right? I get you, I get yeah. you fully. So, All right. I've started with the grating of our cheese over here because mm -hmm. you said it also is going to go into the bread. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll start with the dip for, for the thing. So right now I have some chili sauce and some mayo and I'm just going to pour the chili into the mayo. Sweet chili. Sweet chili. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like sweet chili? Yes. Oh. Am I done? You don't sound too excited about that, yes. Do you? <laughs> don't you? <laughs> so yeah, I like anything chili. <laughs> <laughs> does she though? Yes, she does. She does. <laughs> yeah. All right. Chef, in here right now, we've got some mayo and some sweet chili sauce, but you could obviously also use perhaps chutney. Yes, and even barbecue sauce. So anything goes, almost anything goes. <laughs> Not completely everything. Okay, guys, I think this is the time to get your hands dirty, right? So I've, I've grated up some cheese over here. All right, Chef, um, what's the next step for this recipe now? Okay, um, I'm just going to get this in order for them so that it's easier for them to work with. Um, yeah, yeah, you know what's next. So right now what I'm going to do is we're going to take the cheese. Okay. And I'm just going to sprinkle some into the breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. Just going to mix it. Okay. While she's doing that, Yatla, you can start the process on this side. I am going to take the... Chicken. Chicken. <laughs> Chef, I noticed you didn't add any salt to the breadcrumbs. Yes, I didn't. 
cheese has salt so i try to minimize the amount of salt that we eat in the household and as much as i do with sugar so the cheese already is a bit salty so that's why so yeah yeah we'll take over from there yet like back here okay all right, chef, and I think this is what I'm absolutely loving here. The fact that you're taking something that you love, cooking, and you've made it not only an activity where other parents can, can get involved, but something that you get, get, get to spend time with. You. I mean, you get to spend time with your children. It's family time. All of us right now, with the pandemic that's up upon us, we're looking for ways to spend as much time as we can with our loved ones. And I think this is by far one of the most interesting. Yes, it's time consuming, but it's, it's, a, it's a leisure of love. Yeah, uh, no, definitely. Look. I I call it um, educational fun because remember whatever you're teaching them nobody else can take it away from them so it's a lifetime skill for them they maybe in the future will transfer it to their children as well so yeah it's it's a really good way to spend time with your children educating them we need to minimize screen time yeah but I think most importantly as well is to teach them the benefits of each ingredient that we use because you know children can be very picky eaters like yeah. I said so if you teach them as you go along eat this eat that eat that and those are the reasons he's a soccer player <laughs> <laughs> so he drinks what do you drink a lot what do you love Yatla? Milk. Milk. Okay. So he does not go to bed without drinking milk because he knows the benefits of drinking milk. Okay. Yeah. Awesome stuff. I mean, Yatla, like Mama just said, you drink milk because you need it because you're a soccer player. But is there one ingredient in your house that you absolutely always have to have that Mama always has to have in the fridge or in the pantry? Oh, no. No. <laughs> Anything he, goes. Yeah. So he eats anything, basically. He eats everything. Weird enough, he eats more of the green stuff. Oh, so, but he's yeah, got green hands, these. though. Yes. Okay. And the other one on that side, what's your favorite thing? What does mommy always have to have? Me? Yes. Carrots. Yep. <laughs> wow. That's true. <laughs> she snacks on carrots. That's actually quite interesting that our kids are like that because I know with my son, he absolutely loves cucumbers. So yeah. to find out that they're not mentioning any sweets, they're not mentioning any, yes, they might have a sweet tooth, yeah. but they're still mentioning stuff that's quite on the healthier side of life. That's good. <laughs> that isn't that great? That is actually, especially <laughs> for us because, you know, um, veggies and so forth are much more economical than all that stuff that has all that sugar. So, Chef, you guys are still breading the chicken goujons for us we need to bake these in the oven how no, how long would you want to bake this for and at what temperature um so we've preheated the oven to 180 and then i will leave them in there for about seven minutes before i turn them over we've spread this already um so that it doesn't stick to that okay perfect we turn them over for another five minutes or so all right, and besides chicken and fish, is there another type of protein that we could use for this? Because I'm thinking right now, perhaps a, a, a cheese like halloumi could work if yes. someone is trying. If somebody's, yeah. That's okay. definitely um, something vegetarian. Chef, I remember the one time I went to Belgium and uh, another alternative could possibly be avo because I actually saw them deep frying avo, mm. right? So that's an, another alternative that people could use, right? Definitely. Look, we even deep fry baby marrows these days. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. So you can even try it vegetarian. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. actually is a great option. So we're not leaving anyone out. Mm -hmm. If you're a meat eater, you can definitely do the chicken and uh, the fish. If you're a vegetarian, you could use the halloumi. And if you're... Uh, uh, vegan, you could actually leave out the cheese altogether and just use avos and breadcrumbs, right? Definitely. But now there's also dairy-free, lactose-free cheese that you can try. <laughs> that is also very true. All right. Into the oven it goes, guys. <laughs> Last one. Last then one we'll in. put it into the oven. And South Africa, remember to get your hands on these amazing recipes. All you need to do is to go to afternoonexpress.co.za for the full ingredients list and steps. Now, Chef, we are on the third recipe, but you promised us a fourth. I did, I did, and I always keep my promises. <laughs> so you remember I said we're trying to move away from juices, so we're going to make a very refreshing, fruity, homemade iced tea. Well, Chef, that sounds absolutely refreshing. So why don't you guys go get the picnic setting ready while your mom and I make that iced tea. So South Africa, join us after these.